Hi, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction. Today I want to share with you some Christian fiction books I could find coming out in January 2024. If you are looking for some book suggestions for the beginning of the year, maybe you've got some book tokens, then maybe these new releases will give you something to think about. As always, I've put them into different genres and there are quite a few of them today, so grab yourself a hot drink and a snack of choice and your notepads. I will leave a list of the books down in the description and on the blog post for you to uh, see if you forget any of them. I haven't read any of these books so I can't tell you where they fall on the Christian content scale, if, how much they've got in them or whether there might be anything uh, you might consider inappropriate in them so that's just a disclaimer. I haven't read any, I can't tell you about that. So in Mystery and Suspense, Fragile Designs by Colleen Coble releases on the 2nd of January and it is published by Thomas Nelson. Family secrets can be the most dangerous of all. When Carly Tucker's police officer husband is killed during a home break-in, she knows that her side hustle, finding the antique treasures at flea markets, isn't enough to support her and her infant son, Noah. So her grandmother's proposal to have her and her two sisters restore the family's waterfront Beaufort home in a into a bed and breakfast that Carly will run is immediately intriguing. But it's equally daunting with the animosity that exists between the three sisters. What Carly never expected as she begins to go through the attic was to find a letter in a trunk written in her husband's handwriting, dated two days before his death. Eric had discovered that Carly's grandmother was adopted, a fact Carly is certain Graham is not aware of, and had already begun trying to track down her birth family. Is it possible that Eric's death wasn't random at all? Double Take by Lynette Eason releases on the 9th of January, and it's published by Ravel, and this is Lake City Heroes Book 1. Detective James Cross has been honourably discharged from the Army Criminal Investigation Division, due to wounds sustained when an IED blew up near him. Now with the Lake City Police Department, he's rooming with his good buddy and partner Cole while he figures out his family dynamics. Physician assistant Lainey Jackson is 18 months out from an attempted murder perpetrated by her ex, which ended when she managed to grab the weapon and shoot him. When he appears to have survived and is back to finish the job he started, Lainey insists it's not possible, but someone keeps trying to kill her, and she keeps seeing his face. The Rare Jewel of Everly Wheaton by Susan L. Tuttle releases on the 16th of January, and it is published by Craigle Publications. In her search for a rare gem, will Everly end up uncovering the true treasure of her heart? Personal care nurse Everly Wheaton knows it only takes a few well-placed lies to ruin a reputation, She's experienced it time and time again, but there's a silver lining to repeatedly proving she's confident and self-reliant. When she loses yet another job and an enigmatic stranger offers her a potential way out, she's game. After all, she loves a good mystery, and an invitation to visit the legendary Halstead Manor is irresistible, but she's not about to let her guard down, especially with the other women who received the same invitation. A strange voice on the phone tells them he's gathered the three of them to work together as treasure hunters. The first assignment requires Everly to be a travelling nurse for retired FBI agent Gertrude Levine, who has one cold case she just can't let go, the Florentine diamond that went missing with the Austrian when the Austrian Empire fell. With Everly's keen ability to solve puzzles, Natalie Deltry's vast knowledge of history and Brooke Sumner's connections to the antiques world, they're both they're bound to track down the diamond, except that Gertie's nephew, Niles Butler, doesn't trust Everly's innocent act, even if he finds himself falling for her. Worse, Everly's walls of self-preservation may doom the entire team. Cold Threat by Nancy Mail releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Bethany House. Twenty years ago, several people were murdered in Des Moines, and the only evidence left behind was a snowman ornament hanging on a tree on their front lawns. With the suspect behind bars, the killings have come to an end, or so everyone thought, but now crimes with a similar MO are happening 
in a small t- small Iowa town, and a local detective believes the killer is back and ready to strike again. With little time on the clock before they have another murder on their hands, private investigators River Ryland and Tony Sinclair must work alongside Tony's father to find evidence that will uncover an evil that has survived for far too long. As the danger mounts and the suspect closes in, it will take all they have to catch a killer before he catches one of them. Alaskan Wilderness Rescue by Sarah Varland, releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired Suspense. A missing person rescue is now a canine manhunt for a killer. A missing person case sends search and rescue worker Elsie Montgomery and her canine to a remote Alaskan island, only to discover she's got a target on her back. Now she must partner with pilot Wyatt Chandler, the one man she doesn't trust, to stay alive while confronting her shadowy past. But can they capture a killer before their time together runs out for good? Dangerous Texas Hideout by Virginia Vaughan releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired Suspense. Seeking refuge from danger with threats at every turn, when her daughter is the only witness able to identify a group of bank robbers, single mum Penny Jackson knows their lives are in danger. These men will do anything to keep Missy quiet permanently. Escaping to a small Texas town was supposed to be safe, but when the criminals track them down, police chief Caleb Harmon becomes their only hope for survival. Deadly Mountain Escape by Mary Olford releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired Suspense. Can this officer stop a trafficking ring, or will deadly criminals stop her first? A search for a missing young woman becomes a nightmare for canine deputy Charlotte Walker when she stumbles on a trafficking ring and is captured. Death seems certain until she's rescued by rancher Jonas Knowles. Together they take shelter in the Amish community he left behind, but they can't hide forever, not when the criminals are still after them and countless girls are at risk. Silencing the Witness by Laura Conaway releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired Suspense. A protected witness is exposed. The race is on to keep her alive. When her photo is leaked in the local paper, Avery Sanford's identity in witness protection is compromised. She is the key witness to a murder and a ruthless drug ring will stop at nothing to silence her. With attackers on her tail, Avery has no choice but to accept the help of former army commander Seth Brown, but keeping Avery alive long enough to testify could be the end for them both. Targeted for Elimination by Jill Elizabeth Nelson also releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired Suspense. Caught in a murderous crosshairs, secrets can be lethal. After discovering a dead body in Great Smoky National Park, Detective Jen Blackwell is ambushed, until Federal Park Ranger Tyler Cade comes to the rescue. When the culprit sets their sights on Jen's father, it's clear that someone is targeting them. She has no choice but to team up with her ex-boyfriend. Only Tyler's hiding something, and old secrets could cost them their lives. Then in historical fiction... When the Waters Came by Candice Sue Patterson, releases on the 1st of January and is published by Barber Fiction. Pastor Montgomery Childs has tended his flock in Johnstown, Pennsylvania for two years. While his pews are full every Sunday, he most desires to see a reckoning between God and the kings of industry who recreate on Lake Connemore, the pleasure grounds flowing alcohol and business dealings of South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club taunts Monty as he works to heal the wounds inflicted from his own privileged childhood among Pittsburgh society. Like Noah, Monty prays against the evil surrounding him, but he never expects God to send a flood. It takes five days for the Red Cross to respond to the Johnstown flood disaster, but when it does, Anna Mae Worthington is ready to help. Apprenticing under Clara Barton has prepared her for the job, but nothing can prepare her for the death and destruction that awaits. As if the survivors haven't suffered enough, typhoid fever ravages those left in the town, leaving Anime and the Red Cross with limited assistance and supplies. Narrowly surviving the flood and the horrifying things he's witnessed, Monty's faith is floundering. Then a Red Cross nurse puts him to work helping with the typhoid fever victims, arriving at the hospital tents every hour. 
The Legacy of Rocking K Ranch by Mary Keneally, DJ Goodyear, Becca Whitman and Kimberly Woodhouse releases on 1st of January and is published by Barber Fiction. Six decades of history unfurls on a Wyoming ranch. In 1910, Penelope Cooper, an ambitious writer who has been commissioned by her publisher to present tales of the American Wild West, returns to her family's ranch in Wyoming to interview the women of her family about the past. As each elder woman tells her story, Penelope discovers the many facets of her family's legacy, their stories of love, loss, grace, adoption, struggles with the law, relationships with natives, and through it all, family bonds. The Seamstress of Acadie, Acadie? by Laura France releases on the 9th of January and is published by Ravel. As 1754 is drawing to a close, tensions between the French and the British on Canada's Acadian shore are reaching a fever pitch. Seamstress Sylvie Gallant and her family, French-speaking Acadians, wishing to remain neutral, are caught in the middle, their land positioned between two forts flying rival flags. Amid preparations for the celebration of Noel, the talk of is of unrest, coming war, and William Blackburn, the British Army Ranger, raising havoc across North America's borderlands. As summer takes hold in 1755 and British ships appear on the horizon, Sylvie encounters Blackburn, who warns her of the coming invasion. Rather than participate in the forced removal of the Acadians from their land, he resigns his commission, but that cannot save Sylvie of her kin or her kin. Relocated on a ramshackle ship to Virginia, Sylvie struggles to pick up the pieces of her life. When her path crosses once more with Williams, they must work through the complex tangle of their shared, shattered past to navigate the present and forge an enduring future. The Foxhole Victory Tour by Amy Lynn Green releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Bethany House. Vibrant and scrappy Maggie McLeod tried not to get fired from her wartime orchestra, but she can't keep from speaking her mind, so an overseas adventure with the USO's camp show seems like the perfect fresh start. Wealthy and elegant Catherine Duquette signs with the USO to leave behind her restrictive life of privilege and to find out what happened to the handsome pilot whose letters mysteriously stopped arriving. The two women are joined by an eclectic group of performers a scheming blues singer, a veteran tap dancer and a brooding magician, but the harmony among their troupe is shattered when their tour manager announces he will soon recommend one of them for a new job in the Hollywood spotlight. Each of the five members has a reason to want the contract and they'll do whatever is necessary to get it. As their troupe travels closer to combat in Tunisia, personal crises and wartime dangers only intensify until not only their careers but also their lives are on the line. Of Love and Treason by Jamie Ogle releases on the 23rd of January and it is published by Tyndale House. Valentine defies the Emperor and becomes a hero and the most wanted man in the Empire. Compelled by his faith, he has nothing to lose until a chance encounter with the daughter of a Roman jailer changes everything. Rome AD 270 in the wake of the Emperor's marriage ban, rumours swell that there is one man brave enough to perform wedding ceremonies in secret. A public notarius and leader of an underground church, Valentine believes the Emperor's edict unjust and risks his own life for the sake of his convictions. But as his fame grows, so do fears for his safety. Iris, the daughter of a Roman jailer, believes regaining her sight will ease the mountain troubles at home. Her last hope rests in searching out Valentine and his church, but the danger of associating with people labelled a threat to the Empire is great. Still, as Iris's new friends lead her to faith in God, Iris is drawn to Valentine and they both begin to hope for a future together beyond the treacherous Empire. But when a past debt and a staggering betrayal collide, Valentine, Iris and everyone they love must fight for their lives and wrestle with trusting a god who can restore a sight yet does not always keep his followers from peril. A Season of Harvest by Lorraine Snelling releases on the 30th of January and is published by Bethany House. Can her dreams for the future and a budding romance survive the trouble that comes calling? Larkspur Nielsen is determined to keep her family homestead running and to fulfil their dream of starting a seed catalogue 
with or without her siblings' help. With Isaac McTavish back in town, Lark finds herself at odds with her own heart and her determination to shoulder the burden of carrying her responsibilities alone. But Isaac is set on convincing her that he's here to stay and she doesn't have to carry everything by herself. As a new romance blossoms between Lilac and an old schoolmate and the other Nielsen sisters are busy caring for their families, Lark bears more and more responsibilities on the farm. When the long-feared threat returns and Lark approaches the breaking point, the life she has always dreamed of is in danger and of disappearing forever. The American Queen by Vanessa Miller releases on the 30th of January and is published by Thomas Nelson. In 1869, a kingdom rose in the south and Luella was its queen. Over the 24 years she has been enslaved on the Montgomery plantation, Luella learned to feel one hate. Hate for the man who sold her mother. Hate for the overseer who left her daddy to hang from a noose. Hate so powerful there's no room in her heart for love, not even for the Honourable Reverend William, whom she likes and respects enough to marry. But when William finally listens to Luella's pleas and leads the formerly enslaved people out of their plantation, Luella begins to replace her hate with hope. Hope that they will find a place where they can live free from fear. Hope that despite her many unanswered prayers, she can learn to trust for new miracles. Soon William and Luella become the appointed king and queen of their self-proclaimed kingdom of the happy land, and though they are still surrounded by opposition, they continue to share a message of joy and goodness and fight for the freedom and dignity of all. In contemporary romance, A Baby in Alaska by Heidi McCahan. McCahan? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired. He needs short-term help, but will he find a lasting love? Sam Fraser has three weeks in Alaska to acquire a small aviation company and serve as best man in a wedding, all with his infant nephew in tow. Thankfully, maid of honour and pilot Riley Madden can't resist helping the new guardian, even if the acquisition might eliminate her job. The arrangement is temporary and romance isn't an option, but will caring for baby Silas together change their minds? A Valentine's Day Return by Brenda Minton releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired. They thought love was in their past, but could it be in their future? After completing rehab, Mark Rivers returns to his hometown to make amends with his ex-wife Kylie and their daughter, but he doesn't expect to stick around beyond seeking her forgiveness. So when helping Kylie run her coffee shop after a health crisis draws them closer together, Mark is forced to decide a career in Nashville, or a second chance with the family he thought he'd lost forever. Her Chance at Family by Angie Dickon releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired. She needs all the help she can get. Will she accept it from him? Getting left at the altar wasn't in Elisa Hartley's planner, but neither was gaining custody of her two orphaned nieces. Determined to be the best guardian possible, Elisa moves them into a newly renovated house. When landscape architect Sean Peters arrives to fix up her yard, he might just be able to heal her heart too, except Sean's got a secret, and revealing it could throw a wrench in their happily ever after. And Their Inseparable Bond by Jill Weathercroft releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Love Inspired. They're a mismatched family, but their hearts line up just right. Training service dogs is single dad Jake Bleckett's calling. He's determined to train rambunctious puppy Callie to help his ailing friend Myrna live independently with her growing blindness. Myrna's granddaughter Olivia Hart isn't easily convinced, but Jake, his twins and Callie are on are an incredibly persuasive team. If Olivia agrees to give Callie a chance, Will working with Jake risk her lifelong dreams? In fantasy and sci-fi, Waters Break by Sophia L. Hansen releases on the 9th of January and is published by Enclave Escape. What if fear itself is the deadliest undercurrent of all? Nika would do anything to avoid the hassles of her sister's bonding ceremony, the wrap fittings, hairstyles and braided fire coral, but she never imagined that the waters covering her planet would be broken. As the heavens rained fire and stone, mountains erupted from the sea and dry ground was birthed 
on the deep dividing the water, and the Olomi people for the first time in their history. In the wake of a world's violent reformation, Nika's family is shattered. When the rookie guardian leaves the safety of the deep to find her sister, she is abducted by strange landwalkers who possess strength and technology beyond her imagination. Nika realises that the disaster from above was by their design, a calculated plan to terraform the water planet and conquer her people. All Nika wants to do is find her sister and swim home to safety, but with the landwalkers closing in, escape may not be possible, and if Nika can't save herself, how can she hope to save her sister or her people? Once a Queen by Sarah Arthur releases on the 30th of January. It is not listed as Christian fiction on Amazon, but it is published by Waterbrook, which is usually a Christian publisher. When 14-year-old Eva Joyce unexpectedly finds herself spending the summer at the mysterious manor house of the English grandmother she's never met, troubling questions arise. Why the estrangement? What's with the house's employees and their guarded secrets? Why must Eva never mention trains, her father or her favourite childhood fairy tales? After strange things start happening in the gardens at night, Eva turns to the elderly housekeeper, gardener and the gardener's great-grandson, Frankie, for answers. Astonishingly, they all seem to believe the fairy tales are true, that portals to other worlds still exist, though hidden and steadily disappearing. They suspect that Eva's grandmother was once a queen in one of those worlds. But Eva's grandmother denies it all. After a horrific family tragedy when she was young, her heart is closed to the beauty and pain of her past. It's up to Eva, with Frankie's help, to discover what really happened, where the family relationships can be restored and if the portals are closed forever. As she unravels generational secrets, Eva wrestles with the grief of a vanishing childhood and the fear that growing up means giving up fairy tales forever. In Biblical Fiction... Up From Dust by Heather Kaufman releases on the 23rd of January and it is published by Bethany House. No stranger to adversity, Martha of Bethany is a woman of dust, undone and unseen in her hurt and loss. After her mother's untimely death, the responsibility for raising her siblings, Lazarus and Mary, lies heavily on her shoulders. She finds solace in a new friendship and the beginnings of first love, but her father's disapproval and unforeseen hardship leave Martha broken and guarded. Twelve years later, when her friend's husband contracts a severe disease, they send for the new rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth. Martha recognises the miraculous healer from a story she heard many years ago, and the life-changing encounter reawakens Martha's hardened heart, even as she faces an unknown future. And finally, in the contemporary genre, The Gardens of Eden by Rosie Lee, releases on the 9th of January and is published by Waterbrook. The four women of the Garden family live side by side in Eden, Georgia, but residing in tight proximity doesn't mean everything is picture perfect. Ruth runs the family's multi-million dollar peanut business, a legacy of the Garden's formerly enslaved ancestors. But tensions have intensified since the death of her husband, Beau, and she feels like an outsider in the very place she wishes to belong. Sisters Mary and Martha fuel the family tension. Martha's unfounded mistrust of Ruth causes her to constantly seek ways to undermine Ruth's decisions with the business, while Mary, trying to focus on her new restaurant that serves healthy comfort food, is dragged into the family fray by Martha. For for years, Naomi, the matriarch who raised the sisters after their parents' death and supported Ruth in her grief, has played peacemaker. But as she decides to take a step back, hidden truths, life and death circumstances and escalating clashes finally force the Guardian women to grapple with what it means to be a family. The Divine Proverb of Struzel by Sarah Brunsvold releases on the 16th of January and is published by Ravel. Shaken by her parents' divorce and discouraged by the growing chasm between herself and her serious boyfriend, Nikki Werner seeks solace at her uncle's farm in a small Missouri hamlet. She'll spend the summer there, picking up the pieces of her shattered present so she can plan a better future, but what awaits her at the ancestral farm is a past she barely knows. Among her late grandmother's belongings, Nikki finds an old notebook filled with handwritten German recipes and wise sayings pulled from the Brook of Proverbs. With each recipe she makes, she invites locals to the family table to hear their stories 
about the town's history, her ancestors and her estranged father. What starts as a cathartic way to connect to her heritage soon becomes the means through which she learns how the women before her endured with the help of their cooking prowess. Nikki realises how delicious streusel with a healthy dollop of faith can serve as a guide to help to heal wounds of the past. And the tangled tale of the wool gathering cast offs by Sharon J. Mondragon releases on the 23rd of January and is published by Craigle. Fair Meadows Retirement Community might as well be a country club for the most of the retirees enjoying the pool, golf course, and book clubs. But for the caregivers whose family members reside upstairs in the special memory care unit, vacation is over. Comforting these caregivers is exactly why the Wool Gatherers group has formed. They make prayer shawls to support those affected by the heartbreaking reality of not being recognised by a loved one, people like Sam Tolbert, who has been barely existing since his wife moved into memory care. He finds that his life has lost all colour and meaning without her. That's something the wool gatherers can't bear to see. Flirtatious Jenny Alderman, cranky cro- crocheter Edna O'Brien, kind Rose Harkner and the rest of the parishal group weave him into the circle. Sam has no idea how he got tangled up with them and he's no good at knitting. But when one member t- talks him into taking up his wife's old crochet hooks, he discovers that this one small gesture might just have the power to heal his life or even save it. Let me know in the comments which one of those books you think that you are most likely to want to read in the future. I hope that they've given you some book ideas. If you'd like to see some more book suggestions and more releases from previous months, you can watch this video over here. I hope you're having a really great reading week and month. And until next time, God bless. Bye.